Hi, it's Brittany from Imperium. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to sew the Tuesday tote. This is a pattern from Knotted Thread Co. And this video is releasing as part of the Marathon Society Tuesday Tote Sewing Marathon. So make sure you go check the other awesome YouTubers out that are doing this video. It is also releasing as part of my Sublimation for Bag Making series. I said it was going to be two parts, but I'll probably do some more. Um, so hang in there. <laughs> this is fabric that we sublimated so you can always go back after this and watch the video and see how we did that um, so the Tuesday tote has multiple styles I prefer making it this way I actually haven't made it the other way I don't know if I ever will um, they're both good but I like this one so you've got your main print and then you have accent and um, the other one has your main print in the middle. It's like a nice focal point, and then you have accents on the sides. And there is also a weekend add-on pack. It has tons of stuff, like magnet closures, different way to do the handles, pockets. Um, it has like a center divider, a recessed zipper. I don't even know how much is in it. It it there's a lot. Um, okay, so what I used for this one is the sublimated fabric that we use this print is from hex reject um, i have a discount code there it is meow and like i said you can watch the other video i'll link it and it'll tell you how we did it and then this vinyl is one of the february 15th releases from warm you know is so pretty so cute um my cork tag is from heartwood and hide the webbing i used is from wizardry and then i used a purple waterproof canvas from Wholesale Fabric Direct. Um, the way I made this is the same way I always make them. I really like making batches of them. Um, I sell a lot of them online and in person that shows. Um, last year for my vlog I counted up everything I made. I made 69 of them and I only have like four of them left so they're selling. I love them. Um, if you haven't already subscribed I would love if you did. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you've made a Tuesday tote. Um, if you've made more than me, I'd be super impressed. Um, <laughs> if you have questions about sublimation, um, please do watch the other video first and see if I answer your question. And if I don't, please let me know. Um, so that way I'll know more for another video to do, like um, if I didn't cover something. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoy. We're just going to go over sewing. We're not going to go over cutting it out, but I will show you in this video how I interfaced the bag and how I interfaced the sublimation fabric. So let's get sewing. All right, so since this pattern is mostly measurements, I'm not going to go over cutting and interfacing it other than interfacing my sublimated fabric since this is part of my sublimation for bag making series just two parts series I don't know does two count it does now um okay so one thing I touched about in the first one is using something that will help catch any bleed from the print um so something I like to do is I like to take my old paper that I've already used I take two sheets and I put them prints together I know it seems weird but um, so I'll layer them together and then I will line the print up onto that so that it's on the paper. And then what I have, the way I like to interface for the Tuesday tote with woven or like the sublimation fabric is one layer of woven interfacing this is so fused and then one layer of deck of the light um the pattern is going to have you use um fusible fleece and if you would like to do that knock yourself out um i just like this combination so i'm going to lay the woven interfacing down and you can see through this so I can kind of see where I want it to be. Um, I aim for about 320 degrees for about 20 seconds. Um, long enough to get it adhered. I also keep my timer set for sublimation so I have to kind of watch it. 
Um, sometimes when I just do this, I won't um, do it as long. Uh, and then for the Decaville, we're going to just get it warmed up. Obviously, the glue side is towards my fingers. And then you're going to want to line that up. And then we're going to press that for about 20 seconds. After this adheres, or is done pressing, I will set it to the side so that it can cool down and the glue can finish adhering. And then what I'll do is I will cut out that piece for the pattern based off of the interfacing. I cut the interfacing to the size, but I did not cut the fabric first and then line them all up because this fabric... Um, it shifts a lot and it frays. So, like, if you tried to cut the fabric and the interfacing, like, I'll do that with, um, like a cotton woven, like a regular one, um, but not with this. So, like, now where the deck of the light is, that's my pattern piece. But I'll still measure it and cut it with, um, the big old ruler. I have an 18 by 18 inch Mormino glitter ruler. Um, they don't ship these, but if you ever have a chance to like go there in person, take a class, do a retreat, um, or catch them um, vending at an event, you can grab one of these. Um, this is the pink to teal. I have it in rainbow too. Uh, if you absolutely can't, uh, there is, oh, it's stuck. Um, Ulfa, is it Ulfa? Omni Grip. You can get um, like a 16 and a half inch square ruler at Joanne Fabrics. That's where I got one before these rulers came out. And um, they work great for the Tuesday tote. Uh, that template shop also sells templates. I unfortunately don't have them, but um, okay. So I'm going to finish interfacing and cutting and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So before we sew, we're going to go over the pieces. There's not many, um, but we have our two pieces of webbing for our handles. I am going to go ahead and take my lighter to those real quick because I have not done so yet. We have, well, I have my logo tag. So if you want to put one of those, um, make sure to do that. Um, I have my two bottom accent pieces. I went ahead and added some sew fuse to this vinyl because it is pretty thin. It's like a domestic weight vinyl. Um, it's still quite pliable even with that, but that is fine. I very rarely add interfacing to this um, because it's not a bag that's meant to stand. It's just supposed to hold stuff, but it's a bonus. Here is our sublimated pieces cut to size. So as you can see, even interfaced and having cut it, this uh, material does still fray a bit. So just keep that in mind. Um, I I had, um, when I originally started using it, I was like, I, I, I don't think I like it. Um, but because I haven't found anything I like more, it is what it is, and it's kind of grown on me. <laughs> but we have those two for the tops. And then we have our lining. I'm going to grab a woven label for inside of that. Okay. So, there's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, like, as far as how you want to start it. I tend to make... A bunch of these at once. So I'll have all of this cut out and I will put all of these pieces together and just sew them together. I like to call it bobbin dumping um, where I take my bobbins that are um, almost done and it's all parts where you're not gonna see the stitching. So I'll like sew all those together and then I'll take all my lining, sew it all together, and then by the time I'm ready to top stitch, I'll change my threads. Um, so just a, if you're going to make a bunch. I'm going to do the lining first. Um, so we're going to take right sides together. And we're going to clip it together. So 
So I'm just going to line up these sides. Line up this other side. And then the bottom, we're going to leave a turn hole. So like right here, we're not going to sew. Um, so keep that in mind. All right. So we're going to go with our main seam allowance, and then we're going to taper out a little for the lining. And that's just going to help it sit inside better, be a little less slouchy. Whatever seam allowance you end up at is what you're going to use to box these corners too. So pay attention to that. Okay, so again, we're going to leave an opening here. So we're going to backstitch, move it down, backstitch, and I'm just, so I've seen, um, I think it's like Nicole from Sonar that does it, but she'll butt these up together um, to help you box the corners. I've never been able to master getting them to go completely together. So do whatever you're comfortable with, but continuously going means you don't have to stop and cut the thread and start over. So I definitely at least recommend that. Now I'm going to trim my jump stitch from leaving my opening. I'm going to put my hand inside and push these out a little. And then we're going to take to box our corners. We're going to match this up. And I like to feel that this whole seam is lined up. That's going to help give you a better boxed corner. You can um, butterfly the seams open, but for the lining, I just make sure they're facing opposite ways. And then when I go to the other side, I'm going to make sure that the seam lays flat. So, again, I'm just feeling that those all match up. And then I'm going to sew that. At the same seam allowance I wound up increasing to, so I'm almost at half an inch. We're going to take this and we're going to turn it right side out. And then we're going to set it to the side and work on our exterior. Okay, so for the exterior, we're going to have our two top pieces, our two bottom pieces. We're going to put our label on and the webbing. So you can put the webbing on first if you want. You can attach the pieces first if you want. I'm going to attach the pieces, put my tag on, and then do the handles. So you're going to want to make sure that your print is facing the right direction. So we want like this and then if it helps you you can lay this down and flip it up um, so that's how it should be you should have the 
um, a boxed corner cut out facing the top of your print. And if you are not using a directional print, go you. Um, you want to at least make sure that the continuous part of the bottom is on the edge. Like, you don't want to be sewing this to it. And just ignore the cat hair. It comes free with uh, <laughs> everything here. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to sew these, and I like to chain stitch them, because that is how I roll. Even if I'm not making a batch of things, I still try to sew in the most efficient way possible at all times, and not having to cut my threads and start over um, is a big deal to me. So like this, I'll just start the next one and then once that's far enough, you can cut it. Make sure you're back stitching. I will trim this right here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold this down and we're going to top stitch. So I like to keep all of my seam allowance to the vinyl and top stitch the vinyl. If you want to do it the other way, um, you can. I think the first couple I made, I tried it out each way and I preferred it this way. So again... I'm starting it right behind. When I'm making multiples too, I'll just let them keep going instead of trimming them. But since I'll need this next. Next one. And I'm just kind of pressing it as I go. I'm going to take both these off and I'm going to pick which one I want to be my front. I'm going to go with this one and that's the one that's going to get my tag. So I'll just take a tiny piece of double sided tape so like this is one eighth of an inch. put that on and now I need to measure all right so I've got my halfway point do I want to put it up here or down here I think I might I, think I might want it up here sometimes I'll put it I think think for this one, putting it right here will be cute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch that on, and since it's um, one that isn't going to be like raw edges, I'm going to tie off my threads. I'm going to start with a long trail. I 
And whenever I get to the corner, I just get my needle down as close as I can and lift my foot and just slide it a tiny bit to adjust so that the needle goes in exactly where I want it to. Takes a tiny bit more time, but it really makes it look better. Okay, so I'm going to pull my thread to the back before I get to the end just in case I actually go through the same hole I don't want to catch the thread it sometimes it makes it pretty hard to pull through all right so almost to the hole I'm just gonna slide so I go through it and you want to pull a long tail all right so that stitch is a little bit longer than the other ones but it's okay because they meet up. All right. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to grab. trim the threads and there we have that it looks really cute I like that I'm glad I put it there okay so our next thing we got to do is put our handles so I'm going to flip these over um, the measurement is in the pattern but I measure it out I make a line and I like to put an X so that I know which side of that line the webbing needs to go on uh, there have been I haven't lately because I've been putting that X, but the first couple of times I made it, I um, accidentally wound up with my straps. Um, like one was over and you can really tell, <coughs> excuse me, you can really tell once it's done, like you're like, oh, that's wrong. Okay. So what I'm going to do is you want the webbing to be on the right side and you want it to poke up just a little bit and I like to put two clips you want to make sure it's straight too and then you're gonna to want to make sure the webbing is straight so that's how it should look like it shouldn't have a twist in it so it's gonna be like that then you're going to do the same on the other side. And then we're going to do that again. So right side together. Line that up. And you want to try to have it sticking up the same amount for all of them. All right. Make sure you don't have a twist. And then we're just gonna give these a couple stitches. I like to back stitch, I just I don't want these to come out. And then I'll just drag to the next one. This is something I will do also. Um, so everything except this top stitch so far is things that I would do while I'm doing a bobbin dump. So, for example, like I wouldn't have top stitches yet, so this would be like this at this point. For me, that's fine. Because you can get pretty far with a big batch of these before you have to start changing your thread colors and all that. So now I'm just going to trim our threads. All 
I only trim these down as much as I do right here because I don't want them poking out of the seam later. All right, so now we can finish our exterior. This is so cute. Um, so you're going to put them right sides together. And then this shorter bottom is what we're going to clip together and sew next. So now we are going to open this up and we're going to top stitch both sides of that seam down. So what I like to do is I take my handles and I pull them up like this and I roll until I get to about this seam and I clip both sides and then I go to the other side. Same thing, I'll tuck that like that and start to roll. And now this is much more manageable to do this top stitch. So you can go to this side, the wrong side, and you can open this. If you have a seam roller, you could use it. Just get it started. And then, I think my bobbin might be. Uh, I think I have enough to do this. <laughs> It'll run out before I get to the final top stitch. I just knew I'd already started with this uh, bobbin on another project. So, you can always check. It does not hurt anything. And I'd rather check than run out on a top stitch. All right. So we're just going to go on each side of that seam and I kind of like to um, put one hand under, I know you can't really tell, but I like to make sure that seam is staying open. So I'm kind of pushing down here, but then my other hand is in here. Just don't sew your finger until I get to a point where I can hold it open this way. And then we're just gonna rotate, make sure that seam stays down. It should stay open a lot better now, so you should be able to just feel up here. And if for some reason it's not right, you can adjust it. take these clips off and now we're gonna go right sides together and we're gonna line up our sides and something you definitely want to be mindful of is that these um, seams match up so I like to put two clips there and then hopefully everything else still lines up if not you can adjust it a little bit um, it's just more important to me that those uh, side seams are perfect so it's easier to use your seam allowance to adjust the rest unless it's like completely off <laughs> All right, so matching those up I think there is a bird on my basement window. <laughs> I heard something. It's all shadow. Anyways. Okay. So I'm going to sew from top to bottom, stop, and then I'll just flip it over 
and top to bottom again. And when you're sewing the exterior, you keep a consistent seam allowance. You're not going to go in like we did on the interior. Now you just need to box these corners. So again, you can put your hand in there to kind of pop that open. And so now when we do the box corners for the exterior, you already have this side butterfly open. So we're just gonna open the other side and make sure everything lines up and clip. I'm going to do the same again. Alright. So, you want to make sure it stays lined up. Box your bottom. And then at this point, if you feel the need to turn this right sides out and check it, you absolutely can. But we are going to grab our exterior and finish it up. I'm sorry, we're going to grab our lining and put it inside and finish it up. All right, we're almost done. We have our exterior wrong side out. We have our lining right side out always weird. I don't know why. Um, so we are going to take the lining and put it inside the exterior. Sometimes the handles will get in your way. Just move them. <laughs> uh, and then you're going to want to line up your seams first. So I'm going to kind of press this open with my fingers. You want to make sure those are open to reduce the bulk as much as you can. Do the same on the other side. And then I'll kind of make sure that's down in there. And then I pull like that and I'll kind of just pinch to clip these spots first as long as you cut it right and your seam allowance is right it should line up perfectly too so then I'll just kind of hold this It's fine. And then we're going to sew all the way around. We don't have to leave an opening because we already left that in our lining. And every time I go over where the straps are, I just like to give a little back stitch. 
And I might run out of uh, bobbin thread now. You could use um, a stiletto or like a screwdriver or whatever tool you like here too if you need to. So just kind of bend it out of my way as I go. And before you get to the seam, you're going to want to make sure that it's still lying flat. stitching on the straps. Oh. The clip came off right on the seam. So I'm gonna make sure that's laying flat. And I've got that, and they match. Alright, I'm going to change my bobbin right now. It probably could have made the top stitch, but too close um, for comfort. And then looks like my thread up here is getting a little funky. I'm just gonna pull that down and re-thread this. And then we're gonna reach inside the bag to find our opening. And we will birth the bag through that opening. All right. I'm also going to up my stitch length just a little bit. Um, I use a four and a half on my 1181 for most of the bag. And then I'll go to like a five for top stitch. All right. So reached in, grabbed the bottom of the exterior. Um, I know some people say that they don't like Decaval Light because it um, creases when they turn and everything, but I never have a problem with it leaving lines. Sorry. I told my boyfriend I was recording and he called me. <laughs> All right, so then flip this. And then I would like to reach in and push those corners out. And then you're just gonna kinda like tug at these seams. Okay, we're gonna close our turning hole. I like to just press down one side and then pull like this. Right, so I will start sewing this and then I'll grab my label. So you want to start before the hole. Make sure you backstitch. 
I will push this in there. I want to make sure it goes in further than I need. And then I just kind of pull it to where it should be. And then once you get to the end of the opening back stitch and your bag is closed. All right. So now we're going to push the lining inside the exterior. Oh. So sorry. Okay. So what I like to do is use the handles to help me. So like grab them and just pull and push the lining in. I want to make sure to get it pushed all the way in. So we'll turn it upside down. I'm trying to make sure the corners go in. All right. So now you just have to manipulate this so that your seam is good and you can use the handles again to help you. And then I'll just start putting clips in. Sometimes it's easiest if you start where the handles are. You don't want it to dip in, you want it to stay with your stitch. Okay, so once I have those, I'll put some clips between them. And then go to the side. And then even after I have all those clips, I like to just make sure everything is sitting nicely. And then all we have to do is top stitch and we're done. I have been top stitching it just like this without flipping the bag inside out. So I'm actually stitching in the lining. And it's, it's been going well been fine. Um, so you want to make sure your threads are a little bit long. I like to start right here. So it's on the back of the bag because this is my front and it's kind of between the seam and the handle. No, it isn't kind of. It is. So you're just going with about an eighth of an inch. Wherever you feel comfortable top stitching. Sorry, I know the final squeaking. Um, I'm not back stitching over the handles. We already back stitched them to this. We back stitched when we put the lining in. Um, now we're just doing our top stitch. So those handles are in there good. You can also use a hump jumper on these seams if needed. Sometimes I do. So like, for example, you get close to it, put something behind your needle, under your foot, and then it just helps you go over it. I usually use 
like a little acrylic tool or ruler. Okay. I'm gonna trim all our threads. And then I like to take the lighter right there. Give it a nice little press and there it is. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. The colors all worked so well. Love it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you watch the other Tuesday tote videos in the sewing marathon. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, I would love if you did. Thanks and have a great day.